Hello everyone and welcome back to the English lesson. Today we are going to talk about learning language with technology. To begin with, let's have a look at the questions. Do you have a lot of apps? Which apps do you use the most? Which applications? If you take a phone or tablet, which applications can you find there? Lots of them? Kid. And the last one. Have you got any apps to learn foreign languages? What are they? Actually, during our previous lessons, we've already talked about some of them. And today we will add more. And the second part of our lesson will be about the passive voice. Ready? Go! So, the first part of the lesson is reading lesson. Do you like reading? Let's check. To begin with, have a look at the picture. What's this guy's name? Where to find the answer? Right, in the task. So, look through the task. What's his name? Right you are, Emre. And what did you find out about him from the task? He wants a nap to help him with learning English. Good. He needs to find a proper app, application. Dodatok. Mobilny dodatok. Yeah? What's the purpose? To learn English. Good. And the task for the reading. Read about Amre and notice the key underlined information. Well, let's read. Amre often finds the language apps easy and wants some difficult practice. He would like to improve his reading and listening skills and he intends to use it on his short journey to and from school. How many pieces of information can you see underlined? Count them. How many? Good. Three pieces of information. Nice. The first one. Emre finds language apps easy and wants some difficult practice. Actually, it is his first requirement to a new app, right? And it is about the proper level of difficulty. Nice. What's the second requirement? He needs it to improve his reading and listening skills. Is it necessary to improve grammar, vocabulary, speaking? None of this. Reading and listening. Good. What is the third requirement? It should be fast to complete during his short journeys to and from school. Right? Good. So, here are the three requirements and the task is to read three texts and to find the proper app. Which app is proper? The one which meets all three requirements. You are going to do a matching reading task. So, find the app which perfectly matches MRES requirement. Let's take a look at the first one. So, the app is Word Power. Word Power is all about learning words. The eight enjoyable games which you can play alone or online against other users, provide good value for money. And games last just a few minutes, so it's perfect for a bus ride. Turn down the annoying music, though. So, what is said here about this app? Is it about grammar or vocabulary practice? What can you see here? It is about 
learning words. Good. What else is given here about the app? Here are some games. So, it's rather competitive, right? And the third one. Just a few minutes to complete the games. Having printed materials, it's a good idea to underline key information. Why to do it? It'll save you time later on. Let's move on to the second text. So, the app is English Scene. English Scene is expensive, but the app is often given five stars in reviews. The design is attractive with professional quality videos and excellent activities to go with them. It takes time to use this app properly and it is most suitable for higher level learners. Did you underline the information about price? It might be important. Good. Another one is about design, right? One more idea that it is about videos. So it is for practicing listening skills. Nice and activities to go with them. And the right one is, it is for higher level learners. So it means that here you can find activities with a higher level of difficulty. Read the third description. So, newscast. Read it on your own. Focus on the key information. Which pieces of information would you like to underline? Which are really important? Did you find it? Let's check. It helps understand stories from online newspapers and podcasts. So, newspapers, that is for reading, nice, and podcasts, that is for listening. Let's move on to another important piece of information. You can set time limits. So, it's up to you to control the duration. Impressive. And the third. The questions are often quite challenging. Do you still remember MRES requirements to the app? Here they are. It should be with the proper level of challenge or difficulty. Which of the three can provide it? Another one. It should improve reading and listening skills. Hmm, not many for here. Here was about listening and here are both reading and listening. And the last one should be suitable for use on short journeys. Okay, what can we see? that the last one, news cost, is a perfect match. Right? Good. Let's recap the whole stages we covered while doing this task. What did we do first? We analyzed the task. We knew for sure before reading what we should be focused on. Good. Then we underlined key information while reading every text. Why is it necessary? Because at the last stage, when we really were looking for the proper app, it saved our time. We didn't have to read whole text from the very beginning till the end. We just paid attention to the underlined parts and yes, compared them with the requirements and voila, we've managed to do the task. Sounds good? Right. Let's move on by practicing it. This time you are going to read about three teenagers and their requirements for the apps for learning language. Let's take a look at the task. So, read about three more teenagers who want apps to help them with learning English. Find three key things about each person and what they want from the app. How many things to find there? One, two, three, definitely. 
So, in every text about every teenager, find these three important pieces of information. Ready? Go. Anna enjoys all subjects at school, but finds she needs more help in English. She is bored of doing traditional vocabulary and grammar exercises and is looking for something else that is quick to complete. So, what are the three important pieces of information about Anna and her requirements for the app? Have you noticed? Let's check. So, first and foremost, she enjoys all the subjects. So, she might be interested in learning English or something else. Maybe about history, biology, but in English. And by doing this, she will take the best of both worlds. Do you remember this phrase from our previous lesson? Good. Another piece of information. She needs more help in English. So, it means maybe she's not an advanced learner. Yep, a bit weak in it. Nice. And the third one. She is bored of doing traditional vocabulary and grammar exercises. So, she needs something exciting. Yeah, quick to complete, to be engaged in doing tasks. Nice. Let's move on and read about Louise. Louise likes watching movies and TV comedy shows in English, but would like to understand them better. He expects apps to look good and is prepared to spend a lot on the right one. Which is important here. So, he wants to understand better what? Movies and TV comedy shows. Nice. What else? The app should look good. It's about design, right? Attractive design. Okay. And the third one. He's ready to spend a lot, spend a lot on the right one. So, money is not a matter for him. Let's move on to the third. Eve likes fun language apps that allow her to compete. In particular, she is interested in developing her vocabulary skills. She doesn't mind prepare paying for something if it's worth the price. She doesn't mind paying. Okay, what can we underline here? She wants to play games, yeah? to do the activities, to take part in a kind of competition. Nice. What else? She wants to improve <coughs> her vocabulary skills, yeah? to know more words. Okay, and the last one. She is ready to pay, but a bit. Now, having three pieces of important information about each learner, each student, and the requirements for the app, let's move on to read about the apps. Read about three apps for learning English. Find the proper app for each person. How are we going to do this task? Definitely by reading and underlying key information. Right? Let's get started. Practice the 3000 most frequent words with passwords 300. This app is for low-level students and includes a very common range of activity types. It also includes several games that you can play by yourself or with other users. New questions are added every month. What to underline here? And let's move on to another text. The design of Vid English is bright and attractive. However, the app is mostly a series of links to short but sometimes quite advanced video clips from documentaries. The clips aren't downloaded with the app, so you need a fast internet connection to watch them. Okay. Take several seconds to find key information. Themis. Themis is the fresh and unusual app that teaches English through topics like science and history. 
there is a lot of support for learners who find it harder to make progress. It's free, so you sometimes have to watch a video advertisement to continue using it. Do the same. Find the key information. Let's return to the previous part about the learners. Quickly refresh which of them needs which app. She loves all subjects, but she needs some fun in doing tasks. Good, that is about movies, comedy shows, these sort of activities. And design is important, right? She wants to compete and she needs it to improve her vocabulary skill. Good, check your guesses. Ready? Let's have a look. So, the first was Anna. It looks like Siemens is suitable for her. Why? Because it, is, it teaches English through science, history and other school subjects. Right? What else? It is for learners who find it harder to make progress. And she needs more help in English. One more piece. Fresh and unusual. Unusual. And Anna, we know, is bored of doing traditional activities. A perfect match? Definitely. Let's move on to another learner. So, Luis, will you remember? He needs something with good design. And here is the design is bright and attractive. Here is advanced video clips. And we know he likes watching movies. Good. Agree? Let's move on to the third learner. So, it's Eve. It has lots of most frequent words. And we know that Eve wants to practice her vocabulary skills. It includes several games that you can play by yourself or with other users. And Eve's, Eve wants to compete. So, looks like we've found the proper app for each student. Good. So, let's think a bit. Take a look at the questions. How can apps help you to learn languages? Can they help you? No doubt. The question is how? Which skills or language areas can you improve by using apps? Try to answer this question. Good. Which of these six apps we've read about would you like to use? It depends on what you would like to improve. Right? And the last one. Which apps have we, we with you during our lessons already used at online school? And actually, today I'm going to share with you one more, just write the best app. Do you know which? That is Quiz Your English. First, look through the information about this app. It's a fun new way to practice, improve and test your English by competing against learners from all around the world. Can you imagine? Learn English grammar, discover new English words and test yourself in a truly global environment. And to take the best of both worlds. Here you can choose the proper level for you. Actually, we're talking about B1, right? And think about the topic. Yes, the topic we are learning now, technology, can be found there. Take a look. That is what you can see. It's very easy to install it. It's absolutely free, free of charge. So, and when you are there, it's very easy for you to do it on your own. I believe in you. And once you are there, just think of it's a good idea to practice the vocabulary 
the topic which we are learning now, that is technology, and it is just for your level. So, let's meet here in Quiz Your English. Ready? Good. Because, actually, that is your home task. First, to write. How can apps help you in learning language? And which apps do you use or would like to use? And be ready to share your reasons why. Do you remember what it means? Definitely. That is where you can send your writings in case you need to get my feedback and a kind of prize. But it's, a, it's your home assignment, but it's not the end of our lesson, because the next part is about grammar. Let's have a kind of a bridge from the text about apps to the grammar. The task. You will look through the same uh, texts again, and the task now is to find the sentences in the passive voice. Count how many sentences in the passive can you find there. Take less than a minute. Do it on your own. Two sentences. The first one is New questions are added every month. Passive are added. Two verbs, the verb to be, in present are and past participle added. Right? And the second one. The clips aren't downloaded with the app. Aren't downloaded. Again, the verb to be but in negative form, are not downloaded. Good. So, today is our second lesson about passive voice. And today we will focus on active or passive, or how to turn active into passive. Ready? Go. Did you know? Today, almost one-third of the world's 7.8 billion people regularly use the Internet. Is it active or passive? How do you know? To say the answer, let's analyze the two sentences. Alexander Graham Bell invented telephone. And telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. Actually, both sentences are about the same idea, the inventor and the invention. But in the first sentence, before the verb, goes who, do where. And after the verb, goes object, the invention. Whereas in the second sentence, before the verb, goes an object, an invention. And after the verb, goes a doer. So, it means that if before the verb goes a doer of the action, it is an active voice. Let's recap. In the active voice, first, the subject is a doer, then goes a verb, and then might be the object, active voice. Whereas in the passive voice, first goes an object, this object, you see? Then the verb, and the last one might go the doer. How to turn active into passive? Let's cover the stages. First, let's identify the verb. And then, object. 
which goes after the verb, should go first and becomes a new subject. Nice. Then we should turn the verb from active into passive. How to make passive voice? The formula to be plus past participle. Past participle of which verb? Which we had in the active, right? Okay. And then pay attention to the kind of a line. Might go a doer. Do we always need a doer? A good question. Let's have a look at some sentences. The first. This telephone yeah, is made in China. First, is it active or passive? Is made. How many verbs? Two. The first one is to be and another one is past participle. So, the formula and it says that it is the passive voice. Nice. Before the verb is a new subject, but what was made? Are we really interested in knowing the names of all the Chinese workers who made that telephone? Are we? Of course not. What is more important for us to know the country where the phone was produced, right? So, when the, the information about the doer is not very important, of course we can omit it. Okay, what else? Telephone was invented in 1876 and radio was invented 20 years later. What is important in this sentence? Who invented or when were these tools invented? Definitely the focus is on the time, not on the person. We shouldn't use the doer every time, especially when we don't know who did it or when it's not important for this particular sentence. Right? Good. The phrase we had and analyzed was about people who use the Internet. And we read, today almost a third of the world's 7.8 billion people regularly use the Internet. What do the colors mean? Similar to the scheme with uh, lines and arrows, right? It is the active voice because the verb use, before it, doers, those who do really use, and after the verb, what? Object. Let's turn it into passive. What should go first now? The internet, right? It should go first. Then we will focus on the verb and turn it into passive using the formula Nice. And at the very end, after the verb, we will put who? People. Let's check. What's the result? Today, the Internet is regularly used by almost one-third of the world's 7.8 billion people. Ta-da! That is the result. We managed to turn the sentence in the active voice into the passive voice. Good job! So, it's time to recap the whole lesson. Today we talked about apps for learning language. And let me remind you home assignment. To answer these questions in a written form, and to share your findings, to share with all of us the apps which you really use and which help you to improve your English. Ready for that? Good! And can you hear the bell? It means that our lesson is over. Thank you for participation and 
Stay tuned and see you soon. Bye-bye.